in terms of other therapies being uh, investigated for glioblastoma, um, of course, uh, there's several um, uh, sort of what we call small molecule inhibitors. Uh, these are drugs that are targeting uh, different kinases um, uh, in, the, um, in the cancer cell. Um, we know that uh, multiple pathways are altered and abnormal in GBM, uh, frequently uh, concomitantly. Uh, we also understand now that uh, blocking one pathway it typically um, is not enough to arrest uh, the cell um, in, in, in growth and division. Uh, so multiple approaches are being uh, currently tested uh, with um, agents uh, that have the ability to um, block uh, either one pathway at a time or multiple pathways at the same time. Um, also combination therapies um, are being developed um, to uh, use uh, drugs that have different mechanism of action, mechanisms of action uh, to, um, to try to uh, overcome the resistance of the glioblastoma cancer cell uh, and uh, successfully uh, uh, kind of trigger the apoptosis uh, that would uh, be a terminal event for the cancer cell and uh, um, would hopefully halt the glioblastoma from, uh, from growing. Um, in terms of you know, finding, you know, we're all trying to find a cure. Um, I think at, the, at this stage, uh, we're probably not quite there yet, but I think with uh, you know, recent developments, with uh, tumor treating fields, with uh, new approaches with immunotherapy, we hopefully will be able to um, increase uh, overall survival um, and hopefully convert uh, glioblastoma into a more kind of chronic manageable condition. Um, uh, that can be uh, halted uh, for months, for years, uh, and would allow patients to um, continue living good quality of life. Um, the ultimate goal, of course, is the cure, and uh, I do hope that uh, one day we'll be able to find it. I, s I think that there are a lot of unmet needs on glioblastoma, <laughs> and the most important unmet need that we have is the next effective drug. We have to remember that we have, at this point, for more or less two drugs and one device approved for glioblastoma. If you look to the treatments that are available, again, for lung cancer and for melanoma, you'll see that those, or for breast cancer, you'll see that those diseases have 10, 15, 20 treatments approved. So I see. I think that our next step is going to develop more effective drugs that close the blood-brain barrier that we're going to find specific subgroups of patients. One drug, it's not going to be offered to all the patients. We will be defining which are the patients that are susceptible to different drugs based on different mutations, going back to the idea of personalized medicine. I think that our immunotherapy will have to continue to be developed. We have promising studies, but we don't have yet an FDA-approved treatment. For me, as a researcher and a physician, the other unmet need is to make sure that the patients that survive and live for long period of times actually live with a great quality of life. So every drug, every device, every immunotherapy that we develop we have to make 100% sure that it's not destroying the normal brain. And if we do get problems with the normal brain due to the therapies that we have administered in the past, we have to work on creating neurorestorative therapies that will allow the patients to recover their neurological function and their quality of life. One of the things uh, I think we should think about in, with this uh, device, should we continue it past the two years? You know, is that something we should think about doing? Um, the second thing, I think that's what we have to, to think about as physicians when people ask us, you know, do we need to stop or not uh, the device? The, uh, and, uh, the second thing we also have to do is this is not enough. You know, it's great. You know, when I was a, f a fellow in 1999, survival at two years, probably under 5% for all covers. Now this trial is showing. Uh, that it's at 43% uh, in two years with the device. That's huge. Think about it. 15 years, we're going from less than five years, 5% 5 to Temenar coming out about 25% in this trial, 30%. Now going up with adding of an opportunity to Temenar, 43%. That's a huge jump in survival. But I want to get above 50%, you know. I'm, the next 15 years of my career, because I'll probably be retiring in about 15 years or so, is um, 
I like to see something else come on in. And what do I think that's out there? I think the vaccines are really interesting. I'm really hopeful that something will come out with these vaccines. I know people have been trying for decades, but I think it's going to be these alternative therapies for GBMs uh, that are going to be useful. Um, so that's what I'm really uh, interested in. Um, and so what I tell people, you know, if, if you're interested in participating in a clinical trial, uh, think about uh, going to a, you know, a tertiary care center and participating. Sometimes you can do this in your community uh, too as well, and, and community oncologists can definitely run clinical trials. So what I would encourage community oncologists to do is open up clinical trials because it's tough. I have patients from Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, they all want to come down into Boston uh, for their tertiary care, but at the end of the day, this is, it's hard. It's hard to come in, drive on in, you're maybe you're not feeling well, whatever. So I think if a lot of the local places maybe can help out some ways, that would be great. Uh, so that, that's what I would uh, say is probably the future. I think I want to reiterate to all the medical oncologists out there, and I've been trying to do this in my own institution, and I, I presented at grand rounds for neurosciences and cancer center grand rounds, is what I'm telling medical oncology, the company is not resting on their laurels. This device is gonna come out. They've already run successful phase two trials in uh, pancreatic cancer. They're starting the lung cancer trial. We're gonna do the brain meds from lung cancer. You're gonna see this treatment modality. It's a totally novel treatment modality. I'm proud that it's coming from, from the brain, the brain folks, the brain oncology folks. Usually we steal from the body folks, but I'm proud that we're, we're the guys that are, are, that are pushing this forward. And familiarize yourself with this. This is so easy to do. You can add any chemotherapy to it. It doesn't cause any side effects and it does improve survival. So I, you know, would really, you know, my throwing down my gauntlet, my challenge to everybody, you know, in the audience is, you know, go out there, learn about it, use it in your patients, familiarize yourself with it and, and be ready for the, the next wave in oncology. This is, I think, going to be the new uh, modality that uh, may help all of our patients.